Hello, I'm Chris Beecham, Managing Editor of Gold Derby, and this is our Making of Shark Tank panel to celebrate the 15th anniversary of the show. With us today, we've got uh, Executive Producer Clay Newbill, Executive Producer Yoon Langner, uh, Langner um, Shark and Executive Producer Mark Cuban, Shark and Executive Producer Robert Herjavec, Shark and Executive Producer Damon John, and Guest Shark Candace Nelson. Candace, we need to get you an Executive Producer uh, uh, name. I'd be happy to accept that role. <laughs> You're the, it's one of those Sesame Streets. One of these things does not belong not here in terms of uh, titles. <laughs> Just in terms of titles, you belong here. I wanted to ask Clay to start with, back when the show started, you were planning the show. You made a decision, you and your producing team, that it would not be, that the millionaires and billionaires you would have on would all be self-made. Uh, not inherited money, not uh, given money, but people that that had made it in in life on their own. Why was that important? Well, it's it's, it's a, that's a great question. First of all, thank you for having us today. Very excited to talk about our 15th season. But it, it's it's pretty simple actually. Um, at one point uh, in their lives and their uh, business journey, each of our sharks had been the person on the rug that was pitching them, that would be pitching them. So the relatability was and was there. And they they had walked in those shoes already and the person, so that the connection point was there. I think there's a mutual respect that's uh, that that is gonna come from that, from the, from the fact that the entrepreneurs that are pitching realize that at one point the shark was somebody with just a dream that they believed in um, and uh, the grit and determination to, you know, get it across the finish line. Um, and I think the sharks, they could speak to, you know, the moments, the trials and tribulations that an entrepreneur has to go to, to reach that goal line, to, to actually have success in their business. I mean, I think one of the things that certainly nobody, I think, I, I, honestly, I don't even think we, Mark, my net, Mark Burnett, myself, you, none of us really even realized the power that entrepreneurs have and and how it would be such a great television show because I don't think people realize that entrepreneurs were such great, uh, such a great uh, first story, right? It's like the trials and tribulations that they go through, everything that, I mean, every, and you see it every year. We saw it certainly this year, people come on the show and what they've gone through to get to the point where they're on the rug. And this is an, a, one of those moments for them that's a life-changing moment, uh, uh, potentially. Um, is very in, it's inspiring and it's aspirational. And I don't think anybody ever realized that until we actually started shooting the show. And the first day, it was it was it was incredible. It was you know, you we, we had the first time that a bunch of sharks were interested in there. We had a, a bidding war. Afterwards, people were like, "This is magical." There was just, what just happened, and every it was a buzz in the set, in the control room. Everybody was talking about us, and and we knew we had something really special. And it's because those entrepreneurs they've they've gone through so much, and and um, it's very relatable and um, inspiring. Well, and I think that was really prescient of you guys as executive producers, because Shark Tank really is truly one of the only truly democratic level playing fields out there. I mean, we all know that venture capital is sort of an old boys network, but on Shark Tank, these founders show up, it doesn't matter where they came from, who they are, who their connections are. It's about the best idea and the best founder who wins. And so because all the sharks are self-made, I think a lot of times we have that empathy towards them. We sometimes see a younger version of ourselves out there on the carpet. Now, not to say that you know every investment or every company is ready for investment or liftoff, but I think that that adds to just the overall feeling of um, camaraderie in the tank. Yoon, what would you add to that? Well, I think um, it. You know, I, I love the fact that the the sharks are celebrities. They get you know people want their autographs. They get accosted at airports. Like it's they're not you know athletes or you know singers or i mean they're business people and the fact that young people you know all people like look up to business people as you know as celebrities i think it's a wonderful thing and it says a great thing about uh culture that you know there's all different paths to success chris can i add something there yeah sure um damon calls it the power of broke unless you've had your back against the wall 
and know what it's like to be uncertain about payroll, to know the uncertainty and fear of whether or not your company will make it or how long it'll survive. Unless you've been there, it's really hard to relate the, to the entrepreneurs when they're on the carpet. You know, when we have people that have come in that have had nothing but success their entire lives, we really don't relate to them. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you you hear Damon talk about it all the time. And Robert, you know, you know, you went to MIT and you had 19 degrees and, you know, you've got this, this and this. And we're why always like, here? what? <laughs> yeah. Why are you here? And it's so, you know, to Clay and Yud's point, that that path that we've taken allows us to better understand what an entrepreneur goes through when we consider them. And after we've invested in them and supporting them, it allows us to understand how best to communicate and help them so they can be more successful. You know, Chris, it's those, like uh, Clay said, and you, it's those big moments. I think every one of us, to Mark's point, we've had big moments. Some of them were really bad. How do I make payroll? What do I need to sell to make payroll? And some of them were really good. And I think to Candace's point, when people come out on that carpet, that moment for them is big. And for some people, it's really good. And for others, it doesn't turn out quite the way they thought, which is okay, because they can, they can go on, they can continue and be successful. But just another one of those moments to be successful in life, you never know. You never know what's going to happen on that carpet. And I feel like even if they don't get an investment, everybody leaves with something. Like I think about Heather, the founder of Heather's Choice. I mean, she bared it all on the carpet. She was crying. She really sort of showed us her soul. She was at her wits end with this business and our hearts went out to her, but we had to give her the tough love because ultimately we wanted to see her, even though we weren't making an investment, wanted to see her be successful. Damon, one thing I like is is when one of you will say to the person, um, I don't think you need a shark. You've got everything going already. Um, you don't need one of us. Uh, is, is that important for somebody to hear if that's the case? Yeah, I think so. I think because there's this balance of, you know, you don't know what you don't know um, when you're heading down a certain path. And uh, entrepreneurship is a team sport. And true entrepreneurs, successful entrepreneurs aren't the people that just tell everybody they know what they're doing. They're, they're very vulnerable. They walk into a room and they say, I know this, but if anybody in here knows anything else and I can be of value to you for you to share something with me, I'm down. But there does become a point where the whole reason why your vision is working or you're going in that direction is because nobody else gets it. Because if everybody else got it, then there's no need for you. And at some point, you have to stop looking for the Wizard of Oz and you have to turn around and say, I'm the wizard. Um, and maybe this is where I should be at this point in my life. And I need to get to the next point without anybody else because you can't keep stacking it, right? Um, and that's a very fine, it's a very fine line. And us as entrepreneurs, we all face it. I don't care what level you're at. Even if you get to the, you know, very successful level, like some of my shards here, they know that to get to the further level, they need somebody. But at what point do you ask for it? And I think that's what we do sometimes to say enough is enough. You're good. You know, move on, you know? Well, I've, you're talking to a host, by the way, that's seen every single episode since season two. So, um, <laughs> And that wasn't because Mark joined in season two. I just didn't know about it in season one. My you could have lied, Chris. <laughs> my sister told lied. me to start watching it. So uh, I, I thought you were more. just sucking up to Mark there, Chris. <laughs> right? Like, oh, no, no, seriously? no. Um, but along those lines, I do want to mention uh, one of the ladies this year that I just, I loved the story and I loved the moment. Had auditioned for the show 15 straight years. Finally made it on and got a deal on top of that. What does that say about, and what do you tell people about, Robert, we'll start with you, perseverance and not giving up, not just for Shark Tank, but just in life? Well, I, I think, you know, I think that just speaks so much to being successful. There's never a finish line. You just got to keep going. You know, I've, I've never met somebody who's truly successful that says, I'm done, I'm finished. You got you to gotta love what you do. And I mean, think about somebody applying every year for 15 years, man, you got to believe in yourself to Damon's point. You got to believe that you're worth keeping going. 
and then you get on the show. What a validation just to get in front of us after that level of adversity. I mean, what a, what a great testament to her perseverance. And it wasn't just, you know, applying online for 15 years. She went to open calls. She, you know, camped out the night before and waited in line. And I mean, year after year after year. And, you know, for us, we look at each pitch as a story. And that ended up becoming a part of her story, just showing her resilience <laughs> and perseverance. That's resilience. So in some places you get arrested for doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Shark Tank stalker. Yeah. We've had those. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> the show's had 22 Emmy nominations over the first 14 years, four wins for the reality program category. Um, Clay, I want to ask you about this year's Emmy submission. You know, uh, for everybody here, everybody watching, uh, any given show, any given person submits one episode for the Emmy voters to watch, and you've chosen the season finale. Um, that episode led off with Maria Shriver and her son, uh, ended up with Candace. Uh, who was guesting that week, uh, making a deal in the very final segment of, of uh, 2024. Uh, Clay, why did you choose that one? Um, well, it was, as you mentioned earlier, I think before we started recording, Chris, is, you know, we always look for pitches during the year that we earmark for saving for the finale, because for us, the finale is just as important as our premiere. We want to really leave, leave our viewers with a really spectacular episode. And, um, you know, Candace, that day that Candace was with us, we had some incredible pitches. And um, that that final pitch was really just a, it was a great idea, great entrepreneur. It was Flaus, if I, I, Flaus. I don't want to miscorrect it or mispronounce it, but Flaus. And she was fantastic and had a really good idea. And I think it was a, a great example of another product um, when you, that you see so many times on Shark Tank, and we certainly see so often in casting when when it pops up and they're like, why didn't I think of that? That's just such a great idea. And it's like, you know, all of our sharks had their reaction. It's like, oh, wait a minute. Yeah, I got flossing with the string is really, what about this? It'd be simple. So she had a really good idea and it was a surprise. And um, if you watch the episode, you see that uh, Kevin is bidding against Candace and Candace does a really great job of outmaneuvering Kevin and swiping that deal from him. Um, I think much to the benefit probably of Flaus, but don't tell Kevin I said that. <laughs> um, oh, I will. Don't worry. And, you know, Mosh, Mosh is, you know, Maria uh, has a very personal story uh, with Alzheimer's, and it's been something that she's been combating since her father uh, contracted the disease and unfortunately passed away from it many years ago. And her son, you know, we just felt that the mission that she is, you know, her personal story and the mission that the that they are trying to achieve and the goal that they're trying to reach um, was very important for, you know, we wanted to give them the opportunity to come in and, and, and uh, pitch the sharks because we, you know, there is the research that they've been doing. Um, uh, you know, there was, there was some, some information that we learned that we weren't aware of. I mean, I had never heard of before we started talking with Maria and Patrick that, Women get Alzheimer's more than men. I didn't know that. Why? Right. So that's a, the type of information. And one of the things that I think is really a great asset for Shark Tank and why it still resonates so well after 15 seasons with our viewers is it's a fun show to watch. It's entertaining. Right. But the big takeaway is I'm going to learn something when I'm watching that show. And we strive to find um, moments like that when when there's during all of the, you know, the funny moments and the dramatic moments and the emotional moments that I'm also learning something that I didn't know because there's value in that. So that's also one of the things that, that we strive for. So we're very happy. And, and I think the last thing I'd say about that particular episode is we do have the UN update. We were honored to be invited to the United Nations. And I'd actually kick that over to, to, to Mark and Robert and Damon to talk about and Yoon as well, because I think that they like said we were honored um, and it was it's um uh, the why we were invited to come along you know we had the us sharks but we also had sharks from around the globe uh, maybe a lot of our viewers don't know that there are versions of shark tank in 50 territories around the globe that's how that's how popular this show is in different territories countries around the globe because you know everybody has dreams and uh, and everybody has uh, 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 these dreams to start a business and change their lives. So we yeah, I'd love to hear more about that. That was a fascinating segment to me. And I'm sure you all uh, got tons of, of 
great interactions with the people from around the world. I, I mean, I'm so honored to have been part of such an iconic show that is still hotter than ever, 15 seasons in. But I have two Gen Z teen teenagers. And when you can get two TikTok obsessed teenagers to sit on the couch and watch not just one half hour show, that's educational by the way, but multiple episodes, one right after another, and they're learning something and they're not, you know, trying to move on to the next thing after five seconds, you've got a magical formula. And I, as just as a mom and as a parent, am really grateful for that. Yeah, I mean, Candace is right. I mean, that's one of the reasons we all do the show because it teaches kids about the American dream and gets them excited about entrepreneurship. But on the UN, it, it was fascinating. I mean, we got to go into the, the big room with, you know, security council room where all the, you know, the meetings you're not supposed to know about happened. And we also got to meet with a couple different organizations, environmental and, and another that, you know, where we could have a, a, a really in-depth conversation about what, how entrepreneurship um, can change how the approach to things. And so we had a lot of really good ideas and exchange of ideas. Some they agreed with, some they definitely did not agree with, but that's what made it interesting because we could have that dialogue and they respected us enough to allow us to, to you know, be honest in our opinions. And, and I thought it was fascinating and engaging and grossing and, and fun. I think it's great to, Chris, I think uh, it's great to matter to Mark's point, it's great that we matter at that level. And, you know, in the in the world as it is today with so much conflict and so much strife, to find something that binds people together. And what people don't understand about entrepreneurship, they think it's about money or they think it's about, you know, creating more money and more wealth, but it's really about freedom and creating a better life. And how is that not the human condition everywhere in the world. And I think it was just so powerful and moving to be at the UN and to think of every human being wants to better their life. Nobody wakes up in the morning and says, I want my life to suck. And our show gives people hope. And I mean, it was really powerful. Sorry to cut you off, Damon. No, I think, I think you actually echoed before you even knew what I was going to say is that when you think about you know, Shark Tank has been on in this country 15 years and other territories more years than that. Um, I would say if you look at 50 territories, I don't think there's a person on this planet that hasn't had some kind of interaction or been um, somehow touched by Shark Tank, whether it is uh, securing the neighborhood by something called a ring doorbell that we didn't know was going to be one of the top securing advices, uh, devices in the, in, the, in the country or potentially the world giving to people and think about every one of those other territories that have somebody who has touched somebody else. And it's the American dream, but it's also a global dream as, um, as Robert is saying that it is people want to empower themselves. And when they empower themselves and empower their community, they're less likely to do things that are not in the best interest of their community. And isn't that what the UN is for? And after 15 years in this country on Shark Tank, think about how many people grew up on Shark Tank and in this climate where we're at today, they're better off prepared um, to empower themselves and, and not be somebody who's sitting there waiting for a handout or hoping another person has a job for them. And I think that that is something that, uh, you know, that, that we do at Shark Tank and we're able to witness it because it's not us, it's really about the entrepreneurs who are coming in front of us who, who, who you know, the great producers here are ready to package an amazing story. And Chris, you know, to Damon's point, from an Emmy voter's perspective, it's hard, even if this is our first season, let alone our, our 16th, it's hard to connect to an audience that on television, linear television, that draws in a family. That just doesn't happen anymore. Everything is so segmented and fragmented and geared towards a subset of audiences, particularly in the reality category. You know, you really got to pack a punch in one way or the other. Yet here we are communicating with everybody, communicating with family, families, being open and available to anybody that has that believes in the American dream or wants to believe in the American dream. And that's what makes us so unique. Going to the United Nations was one example, but, you know, all the different, you know, companies we bring on as, as content, as in storytelling, 
there's nothing like Shark Tank right now. We really, really are different because we're the one show on television, certainly the one show in reality that brings families together to sit in front of the television on Friday night and do what those of us you know, on the call have done for decades, but we continue that for families going forward. And that that's unusual in this day and age. And it's something I'm really, really proud of. And we're not I'm really, really, I'm really proud of that as well, Mark, because one of the things that people don't realize is the number one show taught and uh, watched in schools. Yeah, it's the only one. <laughs> the show yeah. is very hopeful. It represents the American or you know global dream, as we've said. But I, I have a theory that everyone has a dream, like they harbor a dream and something that it's something they want to go after it might be, you know, starting a company or might be something else. And watching these people come on every week and put themselves out there and take this big risk, because going after your dreams is really scary because you can confront failure, right? It's much safer to sit on the couch and keep those dreams tamped down. But Shark Tank is like a shot of courage for viewers across the country because they are watching people that look just like themselves from all walks of life go after their dreams and potentially get shot down by some of the most famous people um, in the world, these, you know, regular sharks. So I think it's, it's hopeful and it's aspirational and all of these things, educational and more. People watch Shark Tank, first of all, to be entertained, but also to learn. And that was, that was our motivation with going to the UN. It wasn't a political thing. It was, um, here, learn about this initiative that the UN is doing, um, a global initiative about teaching about all the different things that are happening around the world. And, you know, it, it is all about empowerment and economic empowerment. I mean, money changes the world. And it was really about how can business leaders, what can they do to make an impact, but what can consumers do to make an impact? And you can go there and find out more about it. It's, you know, it's whatever your political stance is. It was just another uh, entry point of uh, educating and learning. Damon, I'll start with you on this one. Uh, since we're talking about season 15 and that's what's eligible at the Emmys, what was, a, this is for everybody, but I'll start with Damon. What was a personal favorite highlight of season 15? Either a person that came on, a pitch, a deal, a fight with another shark. Um, what was something that, that was very memorable to you? Uh, I think it's going to, it's always probably going to be a deal that I did. And I did a deal uh, uh, with, with two gentlemen in their eighties called the crap strap. Um, <laughs> best um, guy ever ever it, it, the best is amazing i just met with him about three weeks ago um comes in he has his little uh assist thing and he still has a dream um to create the craft strap and it was a why didn't i think about that funny you know at that point of his life uh very very uh no filter um and then i went to alaska um to go fishing and i needed to use it uh and and i and i brought it well it, you know, it's not that i needed to use it but i was able to save a walk did it work damon did it work uh well you know yes it did good you gotta explain to chris what the crap strap is though oh i saw it every episode i don't know if the audience you swing that thing around a tree and you don't need to swing um and you keep your laundry clean as he said no uh, the, the point of a one, crap strap is to, to poop in the woods where yeah. does a bear poop in the woods with his crap strap strap yeah. right you we're know? number one but doing number two uh, <laughs> I, I would like to see that clip on uh, season 16 and, he has a, and, and now he's coming out with a toilet paper called moon floss moon floss oh that is genius <laughs> lost your moon um <laughs> But, you know, when I was also out there with the craft strap, believe it or not, you know, you think something's for one application. They they fly around in planes in Alaska, almost like we do in cars, these little planes. And they were like, the Bush community needs that. I never thought of it. They said it's a huge community called the Bush community because they're all on planes. They're in remote areas. They're hanging off the side of their plane or sitting on the side of their plane. You know, those planes are in the water. And they're going to the bathroom. You got to go. You got to go. So anyway, they were they've just been amazing partners. Um, they didn't know. They didn't really know the Internet existed. So we tried to, you know, get them online and stuff like that. But the learning process and dealing with somebody who now, you know, how much I've learned from them about life in general 
it, they've just been absolutely amazing partners and just fun, fun people. Who else was a highlight from last season? I'll go. Oh. Um, oh, no. The season premiere, founder Kristen Dunning, I made an investment with her and her company, Gently Soap. And she was just a beautiful, young, passionate founder who had taken a very challenging circumstance, which was her debilitating eczema that she was bullied for growing up and turned it into an opportunity where she was growing plants and using their botanical properties and healing properties to turn into soap and making soap on a little you know, cook, cooker in her dorm room. So here she was, she hadn't even graduated from college and she already had this incredible business and she was selling out of farmer's markets. And I just, you know, she was so passionate. She was so purpose-driven. She was truly the only person, the exact right person to be the founder for this specific business. And I just wanted in on that journey with her. And we meet every other week. I am very hands-on. At one point she came out to LA and we were doing local media and I was like carrying coffees and walking behind her. And she goes, you know, I can't imagine doing this with Mr. Wonderful. I think you really were the perfect <laughs> shark for me. <laughs> Robert, yeah, I mean, how about you a on a highlight? I think this year we did an amazing deal with a young man. He'd been started a product called The Duo and it was really great. And, you know, we always see kids out there to Mark's point, and it's hard not to think of ourselves that way because you want to help them. But it was really timely because he basically made an umbrella where you push a button and a handle comes down and then you and your son or daughter can hang on to it at their level. And I've got six-year-old twins and I had literally like the day before trying to scoot them and control them in the rain and they couldn't hang on to anything and it was chaos. Well, every day with six-year-old twins is chaos. Let's be clear on that. And it was just such a great product. And I think one of the highlights for me was we went back and we did a update at his high school. And I have to tell you, Chris, we sat on stage with him. And Clay, you remember this, the way the other kids looked at him, like he was a superhero in that school. And if you think about it in my generation or your generation, that was the football guy or the basketball guy. It wasn't a young man who had a great idea sitting on stage that the entire school looked up to. And sure, I got a lot of claps. Shark Tank got a lot of claps. But when he walked out, that school was like so excited for him. He'll never forget that. He'll never forget that. And it goes back to what we said at the beginning. It's those moments of inflection in your life that change the course of the direction of your life. It was a great moment. Well, can I can I just say one thing? That that relates to one point with schools. I forgot about my update on Scully, where Robert and Cuban now have to reflect on life, where Lori and I did a deal. We we exited, we did a deal, Lori and I, twenty thousand dollars a piece. He just uh, sold the company for eighteen million million, gotta be. What a million and um, Robert and Cuban and some other guy that I think Kevin had to leave because he had to go back to prison. He, he has to go back around <laughs> six o'clock, but they walked off the stage and this young man was able to help people get scholarships. And he uh, sold the company Sally May for $18 million. We made it 60 times X and everybody else out there who was able to now get scholarships or find where to get scholarships from from this tech platform. And then Robert and uh, Robert and um, um, Cuban had to reflect on that moment in their life. But you know, Damon, we are we are so happy for you. And now with this extra income, do you think you could pay for dinner every now and then? <laughs> no. <laughs> See, this is what I love about the shark dynamic. They're like a dysfunctional family. They're like siblings that love each other, but are constantly competing with one another and like poking fun at each other. It's, it's great. And I knew the moment that um, Kevin called me greedy. I was just a member of the family. So, <laughs> Oh, I love this. Who is of all the sharks and guest shark? Who's the slowest to pay a check at, at, a, at a restaurant? Oh, 
who, who has a who has a hard time going for the walk? Kevin. I think it's Kevin. Kevin. Yeah. Kevin's I, not I paying for anything all, ever. Yeah, I think I think we're all pretty good. I think Mark's joking. I've Kevin's paid lots of times for me. Mind you, I have to leave. Yeah, that's a 7 Eleven, Robert. Come on, be fair. <laughs> Mark, did you have a highlight from season 15? Yeah, I mean, I did a lot of great deals. Source Soap, um, How to Be a Redhead, believe it or not, Like Air. But I think <laughs> the one I, I've spent a lot of time with lately is Rebel Cheese, which has um, a vegan cheese products, which tastes better than regular cheese. And so we've been working with them. They've got a restaurant. They've got a wholesale business. They've got a distribution business now. So they're just skyrocketing. And so they're really smart. And so I... You know, they they put together these plans that they send me every two weeks and ask me to, you know, rip them apart. And, you know, just that academic and intellectual um, experience for me and then seeing the results for them and how excited they get has been really, really um, great for me. Because, you know, Candace and, and you know, um, Damon and Robert said there's a lot of small businesses where we get involved and help. And every now and then. There's one that, okay, they're not just going to stay a small business. You know, like Dude Wipes has gone to, you know, 50 million plus in sales and Beatbox will do 250 million in sales this year. And, you know, and so when you see a company that you can take to something really, really big, that gets exciting too. Robert, I mean, Mark, I love that idea. Send it to me so I can rip it apart. That is a great idea. And, um, and how many times have you had to say, no objections? Not a lot. I mean, I always have feedback, which is why they keep on <laughs> sending it to me, right? I love it. Um, so yeah, they're really smart. And so that that also that's exciting to me and what gets my attention, you know, because it's I love helping young entrepreneurs. Glove Rap, you know, was a great entrepreneur that, you know, you know, a young kid that's just getting started. And he showed up at baseball stadiums and handed professional players um his glove wrap, which takes a, a brand new mitt and helps break it in, you know, things that you know little boys have been, you know, and girls have been doing forever. Um, but Rebel Cheese, I think, has a chance to be really big, and that's exciting to be part of. Got one last question, and all of you can answer. Uh, we'll start with Clay. Um, we're heading into Emmy voting, as we said off the top of the uh, the chat today. All of you are on the ballot in the categories we mentioned. Who is somebody on the team, maybe an unsung hero, another producer, uh, a crew member, somebody, Clay, that that – Really deserves a shout out today. Mindy. <laughs> Mindy. And Mindy can. Yes, it, certainly Mindy. Mindy uh, Zimrak is our casting uh, supervisor. She's been, I think she came in first season. She's been with us a long time. Um, she's now running the department and does an incredible job. And the Sharks all know her so well. She also does, she not only acting, has the casting department. Acting is Acting as a zombie. I mean, yeah, come on yeah. now. She was, she was in our Halloween episode that we had this year. She was the zombie that walked across the set, um, which was a, a big moment for her. Um, yeah, Mindy does an incredible job. And she also does uh, a lot of our social media taping on the, on, so she's uh, wears many caps and she does a great job. There's so many people behind the scenes. I mean, it, it certainly, you know, uh, we don't have a lot of turnover on our show, right? The, you know, uh, Shark Tank, you know, we've mentioned the American dream a lot here. Our mission at Shark Tank is to breathe life into dreams, really. Uh, you know, and it's like the dreams of ordinary Americans from all walks of life. We talked about it. Damon always says the carpet is the great equalizer. Doesn't matter who you are, where you're from, you know, socioeconomic, race, creed, gender, age, etc. You know, once you get on that rug, it's it's your shot to convince the sharks in America of your dream. And we had 60 companies this year that were able to convince a shark of their dream, right? That they, of their vision and their dream enough so that they made an offer and they walked out with an investment from a shark for, with a deal from a shark. So, I mean, that's fantastic for us. Um, and, uh, you know, I didn't, I didn't want to go into, <laughs> you know, they, they didn't touch on the one that was one of uh, the, uh, one that I remembered. Um, but I thought there was a, there was, um, a splash swim goggles, uh, just a, a testament of like, a, you know, um, sometimes a, a successful business can come from somewhere that is totally unexpected. So Ashley from Spl Splash Swim Goggles had not one, not two, but three devastating uh, events happen in her personal life. And I won't go into the details, um, but she 
to try to help uh, her father, her father, her husband was incapacitated and to try and help uh, cover bills and to make ends meet, she started sewing on the side to, you know, in her, in her local with her friends to try and make additional money. And then one day she was at uh, the pool with her kids and their goggles were getting caught in their hair. And she had this idea and she created splash swim goggles. Um, she'd never done a business. I don't know that she ever went to college, certainly doesn't have a business degree. And she, you know, when she, she basically sewed goggles so that they don't get caught in the hair, they're wider, um, you guys remember the picture, just a really brilliant idea. Another, again, another, why didn't I think of that type of thing? And she, you know, people were like, you know what, you should sell these. So she started selling them. She's got millions of dollars in sales now. Completely they work around their lives. They work great. Uh, yeah. Well, I love that you mentioned your casting director. And I was thrilled when the TV Academy added reality casting as a category a few years ago, because it's certainly as difficult and worthwhile as dramas and comedies and so forth maybe even more difficult in some cases because you're not limited to, they're limited to SAG members uh, who might you know be on their radar or not. You're you're looking at everybody that wants to apply. Uh, Yoon, who is somebody you want to shout out today on, on your team? I'd like to give a special shout out to our editors, our team of eight editors. Uh, I don't know, um, not everyone knows that each pitch is minimum 30 minutes. Sometimes they go over an hour and we edit that down to 10 minutes, 12 minutes, and to be able to craft that, to make it intelligible and you uh, and have a story there, but also entertaining um, is not easy. And they do a seamless, uh, wonderful job. And um, yeah, the editors. If, if I could jump in here, because all the other sharks shouted out Mindy, I didn't get to say the person who I was actually thinking about. Um, I've got to Max Swedlow, who's one of our executive producers, does a great job. He works with all of our producing teams, which I could also give a shout out to. Um, he's been with us for 12 years or something like that. He does an incredible job. He actually probably out of all of our producers has the most uh, knowledge about finance before coming in because he was a finance major, but realized he hated that job and somehow ended up working in reality television. And so it just was a perfect job for him. He does a great job. And I would also like to say our director, the guy who we never see, who's behind all the cameras, makes all of us look fantastic. Ken Fuchs does an incredible job as well. That's Sorry, I had to get that in there. And Martin. how about our lighting department? Because we're I'm not 25 anymore. Oh. <laughs> Oscar Hernandez. <laughs> Oscar with the cowboy hat. Yeah. Mark, who would you name other than Mindy, who you were shouting out? Other than Mindy, um, Artemis Jafari, because she handles... Um, co um, clothing and and I have no fashion sense, no clothing sense whatsoever. I would be in t-shirt and jeans or shorts if they let me. And you know, she's the one who picks all my clothes and actually makes a bunch of us look good. So that that's my second favorite after Mindy. Damon, who would you name? Oh, it's so hard. I had already named Ken. I think uh, Eric. All the people, all the all the yeah, Eric's great. Managers, Mike, and, they, they keep us on time. I mean, you know, they are literally like. Every place you go, they're they're following five. Here's one of the bathrooms, <laughs> and I mean, yeah. they are getting us there. And you know, we're on phone. We have very little time, so we're answering phones and and doing all this stuff. And I mean, they just keep us in this in such a gentle, but I have a nice. I don't know about that. Way. I don't know, that. David. They're the ones that are telling the PAs who are standing three inches I know, behind but I mean, us. I mean, they're, they're, I mean it's, it's like the KGB out there, and they just kind of do it in a very gentle way, like get to set. So. They have a thankless cool. job. Come on. No, Eric and Michael, great. It's a great do job. you all have code they, they, names they like the president does uh, when they're oh. talking about you? <laughs> Only no, one. But, but you know what? They just call I me have to say one Get more the thing. asshole over here. I, I do have to say one more thing. The art department, because... Um, and I guess casting how they go over them because you know they make whatever the item is they they either create a world around it or they just do they just it's such an amazing I mean we have I swear to you I think we have the easiest job because we get to sit there and do what we do all day um, and they have to they have to make this entertaining but the communication has to be very clear in a concise way it is absolutely an amazing 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 team. And Robert, you get to wrap us up today. Well, I think what you heard, Chris, how easily everybody, Clay, Yoon, Candace, Mark, and Damon were able to name somebody. People say how great the Sharks are and what a great job we do. 
but it's the team behind us that makes us look great. I think, you know, I think Mark said it earlier, we couldn't put on such a great show if it wasn't for such an amazing team from lighting, from staging, from everything. And like Clay said, Chris, they've been there since day one. I remember when we started filming and, you know, usually the crew is a little tired. They've seen it all. They've been through it all. When we started on the first day of filming, we took a break. The crew came up to me and said, this is a great show. And when the crew loves the product and they love being part of an amazing environment, uh, magic can happen. And then you sprinkle a few sharks every now and then. And Mark is right. He has no fashion sense. It is not <laughs> really true. He yeah, didn't even call it styling. He if didn't even call it just... wardrobe. He said, my, my, my clothing, she does the clothing. She's the clothing person. He didn't even know the name of a wardrobe. I know, right? <laughs> I well, just you. said reminds me of uh, you. They always say it for restaurants. If the if the restaurant staff will eat there, then that's a good restaurant. That's exactly right. Exactly. Yeah, if I could well, just we, add to that, I think Candace at the very beginning of this said it's she's well happy to be back with the Shark Tank family. In this group, and I'm not talking the group that's here today with us, but I'm talking about our staff, our crew, the people that work on our show. Like I said, we. We don't have any tur turnover. We have camera operators have been doing this show for 15 seasons. And it's it's really is a family and everybody's involved and we're very collaborative. The culture that we've uh, developed with this show is what you see really the same sort of culture that um, the Sharks have with the entrepreneur is very supportive. You know, every, it doesn't matter who has the idea. We're just looking for the best one at the end of the day. And, um, you know, there's not a lot of turnover because who doesn't want to go to work and help somebody or be there when somebody has that magical moment where they achieve their dream. Like there's nothing, it's a, it's, it's a dream job. And, and that really struck me too, having done a lot of <laughs> other TV shows and coming in new was just to your point, Clay, the culture is really special and it's just a well-oiled machine. Everybody's such a pro and everybody's really happy. And it's really a joy to be in that space. There's nothing like a happy office, a happy work environment. Is there, um, Thank you all so much. I hope the Emmy voters will not only uh, take into account uh, your show and the hosting category, but all of these people you've just named, almost all of them will be on the Emmy ballot in their categories. And uh, we thank you all for your time. I can't wait for, for uh, Friday over in September when we get to see you all again. Let's go. Thanks, Chris. Right. Appreciate thank it. Thank you, Chris. Please Bye. come by Thanks and uh, so much. Right. Good luck, Mark. Bye, everybody. Keep knocking them down. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. All right. Thanks, go Maps.